Hello and welcome back to AR77. If you are a fan of the channel, if you do like the sort of content that I put out, then please do give me a like. Let me know that you're uh, enjoying the things that, I, that I'm showing you. Uh, share, subscribe. Uh, if you're already a subscriber, don't forget to hit that bell button uh, just so that you, you become notified then of any uh, new videos that I release. Uh, very much appreciated. Thank you very much. I enjoy the comments. Keep them coming. Uh, it's kind of why why I started the channel in the first place. So that's uh, all that feedback is very much appreciated. I've had some quite interesting uh, conversations there with, with you all. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, I don't expect you to subscribe at this point. Have a look at the video, and if it's the sort of thing that you enjoy, subscribe at the end. That's that's fine too. Have a look back through the sort of back catalogue of videos. Uh, and if it's not for you, then that's absolutely fine. Of course, it's all horses for courses, isn't it? Uh, but if you do like the sort of thing that I put out, please do subscribe. Uh, and it helps me with the channel, helps me grow it, uh, and hopefully might help me uh, bring some more guns to the table at some point in the future. That all said, let's get on with the video. Today we're talking about barrels and how significant they may or may not be in your choice of pistol. In this case, because of this channel, uh, we're talking about replica air pistols. So, I mean, let me start it with a kind of a personal note. On a personal note... Um, you know, it, there's, there's, there is an aesthetic element to it. I don't just buy guns because of their performance capabilities. I buy the guns that I have because for some reason there's something in that gun that I like the look of as well. There isn't a gun in my collection that I don't like the look of. Um, there are guns that are really great that are out there that I don't own because I don't like the look of them. It is, for me as a collector, that aesthetic or cosmetic element is part of the the kind of the, the joy of ownership so obviously a longer barrel tends to mean tends to mean a bigger gun so in that con context you know and and as i said a purely cosmetic consideration you know while i do like the look of a compact pistol like the p365 here by sig um I like the look of that, and it's it's a tidy little compact uh, blowback pistol. That's 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 all great, but I also there's a I have a a soft spot for a, you know a bit of a, a hand cannon like that, something a bit more chunky like the Sig X5. Uh, it's just a bit more beefy, and it, it feels good in the hand. It's nice, big, heavy gun to hold. And I wonder if part of that is because I I currently reside in a country where you know, ownership of something like that outside of the air gun world would be pretty, pretty tricky uh, without all sorts of paraphernalia or going through a lot of red tape to get hold of a, an appropriate license. Um, and I'm not that inclined to go through all of that when I can still enjoy shooting something uh, in a really quite cost effective way in my own garden and in my own home. Uh, and I have ownership of something like something like a SIG X5. Obviously, it's a replica and it's not 100% accurate. There's no cut-out ejection port on that, for instance. But it is a you know 20-round pellet shooting, blowback, full metal replica of a, of a SIG X5. So there is that. Other people out there, other viewers, others others of, among you, you know, might go, well, that looks a bit too much for me, a bit, bit showy. Uh, and I prefer something a little bit more kind of user-friendly like the uh, the P365. You might think, actually, that looks like a nice little nice little tidy package of a gun there. Uh, all singing, all dancing, bells and whistles, nice sights on that. Uh, so you might think that. So that's the kind of cosmetic element out of the way. Uh, let me just take these off the table and talk about something else that you might want to consider. This is the Dan Wesson 6-inch, uh, the original of the original kind of... Uh, series of Dan Wesson replica pistols. It's kind of a, a loose replica, you could say. Um, now, weight and balancing. A longer barrel would tend to mean more weight, and with that, in terms of shootability, could make the gun kind of front heavy. Um, now, that, that might be a potential benefit if it were a real gun, if it were a real firearm and it was shooting like 357 or, or, or whatever, in terms of that weight absorbing the the recoil, you know, if you're if you're none of these guns are loaded and none of them have got CO two in, but if you're shooting a, a real gun and that's kind of you know there's a recoil, uh, a bit of force coming from that that explosion within the gun, if you will, um, 
that weight at the front end can help absorb that recoil. So you might prefer a gun that's a bit more kind of front heavy or have some weight towards the front. But that's really not a relevance with air guns. There's nothing like recoil, especially on a, on a revolver. There's, there's nothing uh, in terms of that that you need to contend with. Also, you might want to consider with an air gun, if you're shooting this with a, a youngster or a, you know a, one of your kids or whatever, they might get quite bored or frustrated by something that's quite front heavy, something that's quite big for the hand and it's, it feels like a big chunk. They might really enjoy that, the, the feeling of having a, a gun like that in their hands. Um, but actually, if, if, if you're out there for any length of time without something to rest on, that could become quite laborious for a little a little one uh, or somebody who's not got the strength in their arm for whatever reason. Um, the Dan Wesson's quite good from that point of view because a lot of the weight really is around the kind of the body of the gun there. This, although it looks like a big chunky, weighty kind of barrel at the front there, I think for the most part that's that's quite hollow. So it's it's actually you can tell that a lot of the weight is around the middle of the gun and it actually uh, feels okay in the hand. The Dan Wesson, I wouldn't say it's particularly front heavy. Um, certainly you wouldn't feel like the, 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 the weight is at that end of the gun. It feels like it's around and about this sort of area, I would say. So that's another consideration from an air gun point of view. You know, that weight isn't going to benefit you um, like it would with a, with a real shooting sort of firearm. Uh, let me bring another couple of pistols out because I want to talk about power. Because sometimes the misconception would be, well, the longer the barrel, the more powerful the pistol and as we air gun collectors know that isn't the case so here we've got the Colt Python here in the six inch and that big long imposing kind of six inch barrel there um, but it implies something that it is it is a bit of a fallacy um, for instance my Glock 19 here is a far smaller gun with a far shorter barrel and actually shoots harder than the Colt Python, although the Colt Python looks more imposing. Now, what kind of what kind of impact does the barrel length have on power? Well, in this case, uh, the power comes from the CO two, so the, there's no inconsistency in terms of the, what sort of load you're you're putting into each gun because the the power doesn't come from the load behind the bullet, the or that explosion. It all comes from uh, quite a standardized kind of CO2. Have I got one knocking around? A standardized kind of 12 gram uh, CO2 canister like that. So the power for this gun is the same. The power for this gun is the same, other than slight differences perhaps in the in the kind of the valve setup. However, um, in a real firearm, obviously, the length of the barrel gives their their time, I suppose, a greater amount of time for the pressure of those expanding gases, that expanding kind of gas from the explosion to build up behind the projectile itself, the actual bullet itself. So you could say, actually, in a longer barrel, there's more time for the kind of the CO2 to expand. And therefore, uh, in that amount of distance, you're going to get a bit more power than from something like this. But I would argue that from my experience, that increase in power from expanding CO2 is nominal. I've not really noticed it. As I said before, with the with the Glock here, this non-blowback Glock shoots harder than this non-blowback but longer barreled uh, Colt Python. So let's look at another element of the barrel length. So another misconception uh, that some people have is that the, the length of the barrel uh, has some kind of effect on the accuracy of the gun. And that's not really the case. Um, that gun is as accurate as that gun is. That gun is as accurate as that gun is. And it's not because of the barrel, unless there's a, a bend in one of those barrels, the, 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 the barrel itself doesn't make the gun more accurate. What it can do is if it's a longer barrel like we have here on the 629, it, it creates what we call a longer kind of sight radius or a larger sight radius, which is essentially the distance between the kind of the rear sights and the front sight. So if you imagine, because we are quite kind of, we've got a short distance here, a slight deviation at this end can make a big difference 
out at greater distances. Whereas with a gun like this, those slighter, de slighter sort of changes in angle, as long as you've got that, that red dot between those two uh, rear kind of posts, it's going to create less deviation. Another way of kind of illustrating that is, imagine if you were shooting at something 10 feet away and the barrel of the gun was nine and a half feet long, you could pretty much just point it at the target. You'd only be half a foot away and you'd know exactly where that bullet was going to go. So the, the longer the radius you have or the bigger the radius you have, the less opportunity there is for deviation when you are aiming uh, if you've got a longer barrel than if you've got a shorter barrel. Another thing, of course, to bear in mind when we're talking about barrels is that thing that we call uh, rifling. So let's get an example on the table of a, a rifled barrel uh, and a non-rifled barrel. Put those two lovely guns on the table there for you. So on the right hand side here we've got the SIG M17. On the left hand side we've got the Beretta M9A3. Now this is a pellet gun, this is a BB gun. This has a rifled barrel and generally a rifled barrel will tend to be more accurate because of the barrel's influence over that pellet. Even though it's over a short distance and you, you might think, well, it wouldn't make a big difference. The fact that the pellet is being made to kind of spin and rotate as it moves through that, that rifling does make a big difference to the kind of trajectory of that pellet. pellet you know, um, Shooting cans in the back garden... Uh, you might not see a big difference between something like the M9A3 and the M17 because both of these are going to be accurate enough within that short distance. If you went further than that and you were shooting over, say, 15 metres or up to 20 metres or, or if you fancied your chances a bit beyond, then you would notice a big drop-off in accuracy from the BB coming out of a, a non-rifled barrel uh, against the, the sort of the pellet come out of the rifled barrel. So from that point of view... The rifling counts, but it's not, not necessarily to do with the length of the barrel. It's to do with the fact that that rifling exists. As I said, over shorter distances between these two pistols, you might not notice a great difference in their accuracy uh, at all. Another thing to bear in mind, of course, is the fact that because of you know the nature of these, they are, they are replica uh, air guns and they are supposed to look like they're their real steel counterparts but that's not always the case in terms of things like the barrel length for instance with the SIGs here we've got the two SIG 1911s we've got the SIG Spartan here on the left hand side and the Emperor Scorpion here uh, both 1911 style pistols but as I've shown you before with the Spartan we've got a barrel that comes almost right to the very end of the muzzle there we've got it right there um, towards the front of that uh, of that slide, because of the replica factor and it, it it trying to simulate the look of the real gun with the uh, with the Emperor Scorpion, we've got that recessed barrel, so the barrel isn't just as long. So it's worth mentioning, I think, that just because externally that barrel looks like it'll be the same length as that barrel, because the slide is the same length, that's not necessarily going to be the case internally. And in fact, if we look at things like the um, Dan Wesson again, uh, I'll use this as an example. Um, if we look at the kind of muzzle end again, we've got a recessed barrel there. But even within that, it goes a little bit further back before we actually come to the, the true beginning of the barrel itself. Now, because this is a, re a revolver, we can assume that that barrel runs kind of from here down to about that point. We, we know that it has to stop here um, and we know that there's some kind of um, spring mechanism here in terms of closing up the seal. Um, but the, the barrel will run from kind of here to, let's see if we can focus, it's around and about here. So there's a bit of a recess up to that point and then the barrel is further recessed before the, the outer barrel is further recessed until the actual barrel starts. And I know that um, I forget the, the name of the gentleman, but somebody put a video on YouTube about the his disappointment with the Dan Wesson uh, 715 6 inch because I don't know if this has changed, and I know that there are those of you who will be able to probably answer this. 
but even though the the barrel of the gun itself was kind of six inches or five and a half inches or whatever it was the rifling on the pellet version only ran for about two and a half inches so I, you know there's all sorts of things like that you've got to remember that just because that looks like a big gun the barrel might not run the full length there just because that looks like it has a full length barrel there's going to be a bit of a recessed sort of end to it there so for the most part when you're looking at I guess the, the the variety of differences between barrels when it comes to replica air guns. I think the main thing that you'd want to consider is something is is probably kind of the aesthetic. What what does it look like? Does it are you in the market for something that looks like a really big gun? You know, is that is that why you're wanting a replica air gun? Do you want something that looks like a big hand cannon? Uh, if that's the case, you want to go for something like the 629 or the M29 or something like the 6-inch uh, Down Western 715. Or even the, the um, you know, the, like the cowboy shooters, you know, the, the, the single action army or the, uh, the Schofield. That sort of thing will give you the feel of a big gun. And don't get too hung up on whether or not it's going to be the most powerful, even if it looks like a big deal. Because actually, as I said before, where is it? This Colt Python with its big long six inch barrel is not as powerful as this Glock 19, which has its nice kind of uh, compact uh, shorter barrel housed inside of there. In terms of accuracy, yes, you might have uh, greater results in terms of accuracy, especially when you compare uh, shooting something small or as, as short as the P365. Uh, when you compare that to shooting something like the X5, part of that might be because it's it's a rifled barrel, part of it because it's shooting pellets, but part of it might be, as I said before, to do with that sight radius, the fact that there is a, a greater distance between the front and the rear sights and therefore less opportunity for deviation. Uh, that might be why you get better results. What you'll also find is regardless of any of that, these guns are all kind of made um, slightly differently to each other and you might just feel that because of the comfort in your hand, regardless of the barrel, you shoot better with that gun. So barrel length, you know, it, it doesn't make a difference in terms of accuracy, even with a, a real steel firearm, other than that sight radius kind of element. It can make a slight difference to power. I would say that's that's nominal in an air gun. So in an air gun, really, the length of the barrel in, in terms of these sorts of replica guns, and, and until you start talking about actual target pellet shooters that aren't necessarily replicas, or you move on to kind of uh, rifles and things like that, really the, the barrel length in these is a, is a, a, a bit of a non-point, I would say. Uh, you're going to enjoy shooting it. They're designed, as I've said a hundred times, for plinking, really. They're not designed as target guns. Some will be more accurate than others, and you will shoot more accurately with others, regardless of their design. As I said, in terms of putting holes in cans in the back garden, or knocking over targets, or putting holes through paper, all of these guns will function much of a muchness. You know, some will be more powerful, some will be slightly more accurate, but ultimately, your accuracy will come down to uh, how well you can shoot and how well you can either mitigate against flaws in the gun or flaws in your own technique. Uh, I'll do another video about aiming and how to actually aim a gun. <laughs> Pretty fundamental uh, at some point in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. As I said at the start, if you enjoyed the content, please do like, share, subscribe, hit that bell button. Uh, as always, please do take care. Stay safe. All the very best. Bye.